essay get here. So I already said good evening to all of you. Um, thank you so much for joining us for our welcome back engaging with Delta Upsilon. We are excited to be interacting with all of our members who are either back on campus, um, hybrid or virtual um, in some capacity. And so Dominic and I are very excited about the opportunity to engage with you all this evening on the topic of how do we actually engage our brothers during this climate. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Veronica Moore and I serve the fraternity as director of educational programs. Um, you may have received numerous emails from me about any of the things revolving around education um, that the fraternity hosts. And I'll allow for Dominic to introduce himself. Hello everyone, uh, Dominic Green here, uh, Oregon 99. I'm the director of health and safety initiatives. So a lot of my job is loss prevention programming, a lot of substance free housing initiatives. Um, and recently in the last year plus, it's been a lot of conversations around brotherhood and how do we develop and beef up our brotherhood resources. So excited to be here today. Um, it's a really important topic, especially going into this virtual hybrid um, COVID era we're in right now, we need to definitely focus on these these things and make sure that we build a stronger brotherhood as we move forward. So, Dominic, can you go back to the first yes. one for me? So welcome back. As we said, um, it has been an interesting summer for everyone gearing up for the academic year. Um, many of you have had conversations with your chapter brothers. Um, throughout the summer, and some of you are restarting those opportunities for engagement and conversation now. So now that we are back, um, I'll just say within the academic year in some way or another, there are some of you who are on campus and, and some of you who, um, like I said, hybrid or virtual. Now what? So as a part of this conversation that we're having tonight, we're going to identify some priorities. What are things that the chapter needs to focus on and spend its energy and time around knowing that things are not normal as we know it. Um, we have to be able to understand the juggling needs of members, advisors, and parents. And so we want to be able to address those things on an ongoing basis and also remember to give each other and ourselves grace um, because we're in unprecedented, unprecedented times where we're learning as we go. And so we need to be nimble in understanding the needs of those that we serve um, and those that are volunteering their time or have some type of investment with the fraternity in some capacity or another. We are all pivoting at a very, very fast pace. And so Matthew, you mentioned um, earlier before we started the program that you know, you're just trying to figure out what's the deal with these online courses? How do we transition to them? How do we navigate? around them, how do we adjust our learning preference and style around the fact that um, some of our classes and interactions with our professors and students are not happening face to face. And so that is something that everyone has to get used to. Um, even on the fraternity side, how are we pivoting to address the needs of our members that we have the, the blessing and the opportunity to interact with, knowing that visits don't look how they looked in the past and that um, we also have to be able to pivot the way that we interact and service the chapters um, that we are privileged to work with. Things are changing daily, right? So if you were um, watching and have been watching the news, there have been campuses that have started um, in person and now they're remote in some capacity. There are some campuses that are extending um, their remote start. Um, and so they intended to be on campus face to face, but they're starting remote um, and some of them are not going to be back on campus until the middle of September. Um, you have those who are still trying to figure it out. So everyone is moving at a fast pace and the, the pivot um, is absolutely necessary. And if you're a Seinfeld fans, um, you <laughs> pivot may be something that you chuckle about. Um, every time I think about the word, I have a chuckle myself. And so what do you need? So we're answering that question of what do your fellow officers need? What do you as members need? What actually do your members need to stay connected to the fraternity during this time? So we, we hope to answer those questions for you. We hope to have a conversation with you around this topic. 
Um, just a, a, a warning, this is going to be an interactive presentation in some capacity or another. And so we definitely want you all to be able to share your thoughts, ask your questions, and even share some things that might be working for your own individual groups right now. Next slide. So we're going to have an opportunity to reflect on brotherhood. So this is a, this is a chance for you all to talk back to us a little bit. How do you define brotherhood? How does your chapter define brotherhood? And I need to move my screen. How do men in your chapter define brotherhood? So if we can have some folks to um, type in the chat, how you define brotherhood, we're gonna start with that question. So those of you who are joining us, how do you define brotherhood? Nick said, helping build each other up and enjoying the process of doing so. Great. What else? How do you individually define brotherhood? Matthew, I'm going to put you on the spot. How do you define brotherhood? <laughs> I was trying to type some as you said that. Um, <laughs> you can, I think for, what? Yeah, I was just saying, you can go ahead and talk too. Uh, I think for me, it's just like the community that not only supports, that not only is there to celebrate along with you, the little wins, uh, but is really there to be able to support you and kind of walk alongside you um, through those rough times too. And it's just kind of, like just that community that you're surrounded by. Yeah, absolutely. Being able to have that group that you can depend on and count on. So um, I'll go ahead and also put our advisor who is on the line, if you can chat with us, if you're able um, to share. Nate, I believe it is, um, how you define brotherhood, um, especially from an alum perspective and from being a dedicated advisor to the chapter. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm uh, I'm in the car. I didn't. I expected to be in front of a computer, but then life got in the way a little. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I I would say it's for me. It was always about togetherness and um, togetherness and uh, what's what's the word? I, I just had it. Um, um, a legacy. There we go. Togetherness and legacy. Like, uh, you know, as an alumni, you know, I, I still go on trips with my brothers all the kind of us. I go to a different city every year. Um, unfortunately, those two things are what's been primarily <laughs> impacted by COVID. Um, yeah. So having a support system is, is you know, absolutely giant as well. Um, and that can, you know, happen no matter where you are, or, you know, what your situation is. So. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. So the next question. Um, so now that we know how you all define brotherhood, how does your chapter define brotherhood? Nick, you want to unmute yourself and share with us how your chapter defines brotherhood? Sure. Yeah, this is a, I guess, a bit harder question for me to answer um, because our chapter has a lot of different perspectives, which is one of our highlights and also one of the things that makes it kind of difficult to pinpoint any one idea uh -huh. but um if i had to think about it I, I think i would say this uh this shared experience of going through college together and having like the home base at du um because because we're at georgia tech and mm -hmm. a lot of the time the academics get pretty pretty intense and mm -hmm. bogs you down so it's the having somewhere to fall back on people to support you um people to know like, like to be with a group that, that knows what you're going through together is how we get a lot of our, how we define brotherhood. Yeah, absolutely. 
especially within a group, a lot of those things can be um, defined and brotherhood can be defined by the actions, right? Like what you see brothers doing and how they're interacting with each other. It's very easy to see that enacted. Um, and like you said, when you have different perspectives, there's a lot of different viewpoints, but when you see that opportunity for brothers to engage with each other and to share moments with each other, um, it's something that's very beneficial. Matt, would you like to share how your chapter defines brotherhood? Uh, <clears throat> I think for our chapter, it's really just that shared knowing that we might not always agree on everything that's going on, but we at least share like a, the same set of values. And we know no matter what class we're in or what year we are, that if we call someone, like they'll be there to answer that and be there to support each other. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And those are the things, right, that we want to make sure that we continue to um, encourage you all to do, right? So to continue encouraging you to have those conversations around what does brotherhood mean to me individually? How do I define it? And, and how do I actually reciprocate um, that to others that may be involved in members of the chapter? And I would even go so far as to say, how do I reciprocate that to individuals who I want to join? Um, your chapter, right? Like how do I continue to extend that hand of friendship to individuals that regardless of if they're brothers in the chapter yet or if they're potential new members that they know when they're joining our group and our organization that that is going to always be a reflection of our interactions together that we can embody what brotherhood is. I'm going to give the floor over to Dominic to walk us through um, how the fraternity defines brotherhood. And those of you who are on the line, um, you probably are familiar with these concepts because they are very prevalent in our educational programming material, but um, a focal point also with our membership outcomes assessment. Dominic. Perfect. Thanks, Veronica. So as, as Veronica said, um, you might recognize some of these, so solidarity, belongings, shared social and accountability is how do we, really the cornerstones of what kind of builds our, our organization, builds our membership, how you all interact with each other, you know, what does it look like, you know, being a good brother means also holding each other accountable. I actually was just talking to a chapter president about that yesterday, um, about, you know, this is going to be a trying times, and a lot of times in the past where there might have been more flexibility in the past, now that we're a lot of your campuses have pretty strict sanctions or uh, policies around what you can and can't do right now. Um, and what does that look like? And how do you stay together? Um, what does it really mean to belong to the organization? Um, I think a lot of times this is going to be some great opportunity for you all to reflect on what it really means to be a DU. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then, and then the shared social component of it. But so much of Brotherhood is, is sharing those social experiences. And social can be defined in many different ways. But we're going to do a, a deeper dive into that right now. Perfect. So what we're going to do is I'm going to walk through some activities. Um, this PowerPoint um, is available as well. So any of you on the call, um, you can feel free to email me and I can send it to you. But there's going to be some specific ideas, um, specific ideas attached to resources that we have for the fraternity. Um, so I, when I, I'm going to use a little disclaimer that some of these activities um, depending on what model you're in right now. So if you're all together, if you're a hybrid, if it's completely virtual, depending on what that looks like. So a lot of these, we first of all, want to make sure that you're following social distancing guidelines, you're following your state, university, um, local ordinances around what you can do and can or cannot do together. So some of these activities just might not work for you based on if you're not together at all. But I know a lot of you in some cases that campuses that are all fully online, some of you still are living together. So there's still opportunities for you to get together in much smaller situations. I know I know when I was an undergrad in my chapter that a lot of times we only view brotherhood events, sometimes as larger scale events for everyone, right? So this is kind of taking the taking a lot of ideas and then mix and having them be a much smaller uh, piece. So we're gonna walk through um, different types of activities, um, social activities, learning activities, and reflection activities, and whatever that might look like. So social activities, we're going to walk through a significant amount of those are what we're going to focus on today, is how can that interaction with each other. When I say social, it doesn't mean social events, it doesn't mean events with sororities, it doesn't mean a formal or things like that. It's like specific things that are highly interactive, um, whether it be virtual or in person. Um, learning activities and reflection activities are much more things we actually get to talk to each other, discuss things, um, and some of the, if you look on the slide on the right, there's things where we can really, and I know some of your chapters on this call, 
already use some of these programs is how can we learn from each other? What does it look like to share important things that we're really excited about? And how can we make sure that we empower guys in the chapter that just because they're not the Brotherhood Chair or not on the Brotherhood Committee, they could still plan events based on interests, hobbies, classes, years, whatever that might look like is getting people together. Um, um, Cause I think like, um, you know, Veronica and I did a similar type of program like this right when the lockdown started. And a lot of the conversation was around while some individual officers or the presidents might not think that the chapter needed a lot of online or virtual programming, a lot of men were still asking for it, right? They still wanted that interaction with each other, whether it be weekly or a couple times a week or in large scales or small scales. So really being flexible, whatever that might look like. So perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down some ideas in seven, there's gonna be seven different kind of categories. So I'm gonna go quickly go through these. I'm not gonna read off everything on each slide, uh, but at least compartmentalizing these types of ideas. So this, what I'm pulling out are things that are gonna be specifically that can be done in smaller groups, um, social distance or virtual. Um, this entire resource is actually on the DU website. So under chapter resources, under the VP membership education um, section, if you scroll all the way down, I think it's the bottom left, um, there will be a section that actually says Brotherhood Events. And these are things specifically pulled from that. That, that resource is just created uh, this summer, so. Perfect, so chapter level things, a lot of these things are things that you all are doing already. And these are specifically chapter level things. So we all know that a lot of social distancing guidelines, if you are together, that you, they're, they're saying that you can't have people, you can't have more than 20 people in the room together, right? So what does this look like? A lot of chapters, even if they are together, they're not gonna be able to do chapter meetings together. So how can you make that experience virtual, make it interesting, make it um, an experience that, um, that people are, it's not just officers talking at their computers, but what, how can you make it more interactive, right? So a lot of chapters are moving to weekly awards, brother of the week, scholar of the week, whatever they might look like. Um, some chapters are, um, and we're gonna have this resource available up on the website this week or early next week, but uh, almost like virtual gavel pass, you end the meeting and every brother in the chapter has an opportunity to share what's going on in his, his life, you know, 30 seconds or less, less or 140 characters or less. What does that look like to share anything? It is not, it's not announcements. It's not, it's not about um, chapter related things. It's literally like about sports, about his family, about whatever might be going on, good or bad, right? So some chapters also will have open discussion topics. Um, they'll have a question for the day, just kind of like a quick icebreaker question. We actually do that on DU staff every Wednesday for our staff meetings. We come up with um, random random uh, question topics. It could be funny things. So one of the questions we asked last week, Ron, I think it's gonna laugh at me, but there was a question that I saw posted is, is a hot dog a sandwich or a taco, right? So, but it was people had very highly um, entertaining um, opinions about what a hot dog actually is. It was pretty funny. Uh, but whatever that might look like, um, and, and also some chapters also, you know, um, end every meeting by saying why they're proud to be a DU, right? So whatever that might look like, how do you keep your meetings interesting, entertaining, um, but also that people really wanna make sure that they're they're tuning in every week for a chapter, right? As for your exec board, I, many of you might've already been doing this, but are you calendar planning? Are you goal setting? There's, you know, with the chapter having to pivot and have to do different things this fall, what does it look like for goals are gonna be different, making sure that every officer has a clear idea of what he's gonna be doing this semester and making sure that you're, you know, making sure you're getting all the administrative tasks. And um, as you all know, CP was, there's was a big overhaul of the CP program. Some of the men of merit requirements are changed. How you, your budget's going to be very different this year because there's not going to be a lot of on, um, social opportunities, but also a lot of in-person opportunities. So how are you changing or moving different parts of your budget around for this? Other things, other, a lot of chapters are doing virtual initiations, a virtual associate member ceremony, but also virtual so, associate member program. Um, a lot of chapters, are, like I said, are, are, are moving to like interest discussion groups. Um, so this could be a weekly Wednesday night Bible study group. It could be um, the groups are you're all watching a TV show together on a on a specific night. I know the bachelorette's coming back, right? So whatever that, that might look like. I'm not, I was at a chapter in the spring, and that was like their one of their big brotherhood events. Was they all watched the bachelorette, bachelor or bachelorette together? It was pretty funny. Um, also, what does virtual academic support look like for each other, right? So tutoring groups, study groups. How can you still get together on Zoom and even y'all have your computers up and you can ask each other questions? A lot of chapters have assigned academic mentors for their associate members. So what does this look like for you to continue to support the guys? It, while it is gonna be a very much a different experience, how can you still 
um, do this business type of work and still support members that while you're not together, the chapter brothers are still there and volunteering their time to help each other through this. So perfect. So I'm going to go into the service slide. I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are ways, um, whether it be adopting a family during the holiday season, a lot of chapters um, talk about neighborhood area cleanups, um, ways that you all can get outside and do service events. So you might not be able to go to homeless shelter. You might not be able to do an animal shelter because of COVID restrictions, but what are things you can be doing outside in smaller groups? It doesn't have to be the entire chapter, uh, but what can you all do? And, you know, one of the, we got the idea of volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Not sure if they're allowing this right now, but if for virtual opportunities, what are ways that you can all still um, do things to support the local, your, your local communities? Um, and this could also be a lot of civic engagement work, um, whatever that might look like for y'all, is to still be able to do things. Um, a lot of chapters, you can assign people to, you know, smaller pockets of people who are very interested in certain types of service if you're all together. Or some of these people, some of you can also be doing this at home. So if you are at home, is how can you still be civically engaged and then your chapter can still get credit for um, service hours through the Metamerit program. So some, some just ways to stay engaged. Sporting events, try to keep this as a lot of, you know, a lot more, some sports are more uh, socially distant uh, focus than others. So, Practice sports, training for uh, some kind of or, or race. Um, spike ball can be pretty limited, obviously just down to four people. Darts, tournaments, foosball, cornholes, bags, whatever you might call it. Things that you all can still try to do together. Um, a lot of, you know, I think a lot of chapters have talked to me about just trying to get guys still active and guys who are really into physical activity. You're not going to be playing in real sports together, but how can you still stay active together in smaller group settings? Um, and this is a way to kind of build some of those brotherhood events. So, you know, obviously a cornhole tournament would be very easy to just set people up in a bracket and it doesn't have to be a lot of people outside or playing at any given time, but it's just a way to keep guys engaged. Excursions, what are kind of the outdoorsy things? I went to college in Oregon, so some of you might not have as much access to local things, but what does this look like to just get out, um, out with each other? So hiking, fishing, camping, um, some of the things that you might have, you know, your um, your formal, your fall formal might, might have to be directed and might be maybe smaller scale or, you know, Pockets of guys go out and go hiking together, camping together, whatever that might look like. Taking advantage of um, little things that are out there um, and encouraging guys to just, you know, be with each other, you know, wearing masks and whatever that might look like for y'all. Food. Um, a lot of people, a lot of chapters in talking about brotherhood budgets. If you have a budget, I would, if you don't have a budget, think about it. Um, if you have some of that money available, if not, a lot of the ideas I'm mentioning really could cost nothing. Um, is thinking about potluck meals. Um, some chapters talk to me about hosting cooking classes, um, or you could bring in some, someone from the outside. So whatever that might look like. Um, a lot of the last few ideas, I think, are things that so I got this uh, idea from one of our chapters is they are splitting up their chapter um, into either pairs or groups of like five or less to go out. And every like Thursday night, they go out to dinner together. So it's not everyone in the chapter, it's just five guys. And the next week, it'd be five different guys, right? So it's almost like a matchmaking service to kind of mix up who's in town to get guys talking to each other. It could also be a dinner thing. It also could be a smaller, it could be a lunch thing as well to try to maybe have, since some of you are used to having all meals together. Um, and I know a lot of times with COVID restrictions right now, a lot of a lot of chefs we're talking about, or chefs we're talking about, or, you know, the chefs are boxing up the lunches and sending, telling them to like, go back to your room, which kind of defeats the ability for people to kind of engage during a meal. So how can you all still engage with each other? Um, through over a meal and what, what that might look like. So some of that's possible. We also want to make sure that you're um, still following uh, guidelines, why not COVID guidelines, but making sure that's a good way to meet, go out and uh, interact with each other. Watch parties, sporting events are on right now, um, NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, away games if your football teams are playing this uh, this fall, but there's gonna be lots of things going off there. I know the, the VMA awards were last night or Sunday night. Um, the Emmys are coming up next month. Things to just kind of watch together. I know with the, um, with, you know, a lot of, there's some other opportunities we'll share, but, but what are things that y'all can get together in smaller group scales or just guys, encourage guys to meet, meet up with each other um, in a small, in smaller scale opportunities. And here, here's a couple other things, just poker nights. A lot of these can be done virtually. Uh, trivia nights. Um, I've seen some chapter do some really cool things over Zoom where, um, you know, you find out, the most obscure fun facts about each other um, and then make it kind of a Jeopardy style trivia night um, so everyone can participate but you know trying to do some guessing about you know random things about your brothers that's a good way to get to know each other 
Um, and obviously there's movie nights. Movie nights can easily be done, um, especially through there's Netflix, that, the app and Netflix party and be able to watch, watch movies together. Jackbox has some obvious, so those of you that are familiar, Jackbox has some really fun interactive games that you all can do virtually. Um, Fantasy leagues, it's that time of year. I'm, if you all haven't done it, I know um, the example when I, I, I worked with our Virginia chapter, they always have a big fantasy league for football every year. Um, great, great opportunity ways to interact with each other. Video game tournaments are, are been very big. So setting up brackets for video games. Um, some chapters also have done book clubs. So whatever that is, what, whatever your interests are, it's really encouraging and enabling and empowering guys to say, hey, this is what I want to do. Who wants to join me? And allowing guys to do a lot of that stuff. So the chapter doesn't have to plan everything as an exec board. You don't have to take on that pressure to do stuff for everyone. So, um, all right. So I'll go through these. Here's are just some platforms. A lot of these are, um, are not going to be uh, new to all of you, but um, opportunities. So whether it be through Zoom, FaceTime, there's a lot of like Google Hangout, um, Microsoft Teams, whatever that might look like, and some other opportunity apps. Marco Polo is like a video walkie-talkie app. It's actually pretty entertaining. Uh, but as I mentioned, the things on the right, Netflix parties, TikTok challenges, um, whatever it looks like. Some chapter talked about doing like a DU Cribs event. So if people are at home right now is, the, you know, a couple of brothers each week will have an opportunity to show like what does home life look like for them and do a little video and send it out to the chapter. So whatever it looks like, they can do exercise classes outside. I know I've, um, as someone who, there's a lot of outdoor space here where I live that um, I definitely see, you know, groups of five or six people doing um, some type of, you know, CrossFit or any type of outdoor exercise activity together, running groups, whatever that might look like. Uh, polls of the day was uh, talking about um, some type of interactive question of the day for everyone in the chapters and put that in your group name, whatever that might look like. And other chapters actually profiling brothers on their social media platforms. So think about Instagram going into the recruitment season is spotlighting specific guys and highlights of, of a, a diversity of different interests, majors, um, career aspirations of what guys are doing um, and spotlighting them on your social media just to kind of get out there and put yourself out there just to kind of to keep that content um, active. Lastly, before I turn it back over to Veronica, is thinking about also how are you engaging your alumni, right? So what can you do in a, in a virtual setting or a smaller scale setting to, for around career development, resume reviews, um, setting up um, potentially alumni mentors? A lot of our chapters, and this might be something you can engage your alumni with, is um, there are some chapters that actually have an alumni mentor for everyone on their exec board or potentially try to get an alumni mentor for everyone in their chapter, right? So try to make, uh, you basically assign an undergraduate member with an alumnus that might be in his, in the same career interest um, and being able to um, engage with them and figure out how do you get started? Um, how, what does this look like? Um, and I think sometimes virtual happy hours do help with that, but also how can you even have alumni um, you know, zoom into a meeting to talk about their career, just kind of mix things up. Um, and as we think about like the purpose and, and why we join an organization, a lot of times networking is one of those big keys, but sometimes we just don't even know where to get started. So um, if you have questions about that, um, I know one of the things that we talked about when Veronica did, and I did the program in March was that we have lists, we have the ability to pull lists of all your living alumni for your specific chapter, but also all the living alumni in a specific geographic region. So if you're in Daytona Beach, we're like, I'm just using Embry-Riddle as an example. We did this for Gavin is that we are able to pull not only all the Embry-Riddle alumni for him, but also all the alumni within like a 30 mile radius that were DUs from all over the country, right? So it might've been DUs from Florida or Oregon, other people, but anyone in a 30 mile radius of your specific town, if you wanna actually have, expand your outreach and actually have DUs from other chapters involved in some type of alumni engagement. Perfect, I'll turn it back to Veronica. Thank you, Dominic. So um, as we wrap up, I just want to bring our attention to understanding the, the lifelong commitment and experience that we have when we join fraternities or sororities. Um, I myself am a sorority woman, um, was initiated in 2003, and I am so grateful for the experience that I have had to create and build those lifelong friendships with my sorority sisters, um, to have opportunities to know that I started my career in higher education because of my sorority experience. And so it has the potential to be life-changing, right? As cliche as that might sound, the reality is that a lot of people find belonging, a lot of people find 
comfort and they also find reassurance in joining and being a part of a group that provides them with a substantial experience that's beneficial for them, not just while they're at college, but way beyond that time. And that's evident in the amount of alumni that we have servicing the men across the United States and Canada. We have some very dedicated alums who give a lot of time um, and energy to our undergraduate men. We have, um, you know, members who are serving on the fraternity board, on the foundation board, who continue to come and facilitate educational programs for the fraternity. And that's really because they see this experience as lifelong. They've built that sense of belonging and they have a strong foundation of brotherhood. And so we want to be able to share with you all the importance of having the engagement level of your interactions with your chapter brothers at an at a high right to make sure that that's something that is a priority right that we talked about this in the beginning what are the priorities that we are setting for the the experience this fall and that's making sure that we're engaging with each other so that people see the value in not only what they get socially from the fraternity but those bonds that you all communicated earlier in our, in our activity and the fact that you know when you have an issue or a problem or you're going through a breakup, you're going through a loss with a family member that you know you have those brothers around you that can hold um, hold your hand, right? Give you a hug, embrace you, let you know that it's going to be okay. And that experience extends way beyond just your time on your university or college campuses. Um, the network and beyond the college experience is absolutely amazing. One of the things that I love about seeing members of Delta Upsilon interact is when all of the um, brothers have an opportunity to interact at Leadership Institute. You see how, how strong those networks are and how willing alumni brothers are to give to undergraduates and to make sure that they have a beneficial experience. And we know that we would not be able to have a lot of our educational programs um, and a lot of the things that the fraternity wants to do in terms of supporting our undergraduate men without the giving of members back to the fraternity. And whether that be with time or monetary resources, we're grateful for the opportunity to extend that experience beyond just what you might be um, doing on your college campus. And so we definitely encourage you all to think beyond just that four year experience. We want you to think about opportunities for mentorship. And so a lot of times our undergraduates look for mentors and alumni, and, and that's great because they are willing to serve. What does it look like for that mentorship to start within the chapter? And what does it look like for that to be an expectation that when you join, you have you know, a big brother that you can go to and they find comfort um, and brotherhood within those relationships. And so, what I want to ask you all to think about, not only in this moment, but in the future, is what will be your connection to the fraternity now and in the future? How can you ensure that you are conscious of what you individually can bring to the fraternity um, and what the fraternity can mean for you later on? One of the things that I would love to hear from you all and we asked this question on one of the other programs that we did as well. But when we think about belonging, when we think about engaging our members, we have to go back to the foundational question of why did you join the fraternity? And why do you choose to stay involved? Because that's a conscious choice to come back to campus every single year or to come back and continue to advise a chapter every single year when you have the choice not to, but you, you made a conscious choice to say, I'm going to continue to be involved. And so there, there's a reason behind that. And if I can just open it up um, for a few of you to comment on why did you join the fraternity and why did you choose to stay involved? I think that's a great way for us to be able to remember what our lifetime, lifelong commitment looks like and also something that we can hold on to as we continue to pivot and be nimble, be nimble and give each other grace as we navigate uh, through this new normal. So if you'd like to share uh, your answers to these two questions, one, the other, or both, um, feel free to do so. Yeah, I'll go. Um, just about why I joined the uh, fraternity. Um, in the beginning, it was uh, just, you know, the guys seemed to, to I, uh, who I sit most with. And, you know, I went around and rushed basically everywhere. Um, and uh, they worked on their own house, which I liked um, because I like building stuff. 
Um, but it, it became a lot more than that. And it came about um, not only the values that I shared with them uh, vis-a-vis the foundational principles, but also the values that I learned from all my brothers. Because as Nick alluded to earlier, Georgia Tech is a very, very diverse chapter. Um, and so that became kind of the, the legacy that built into me. And I feel compelled to serve um, that legacy and help it grow for the future. So kind of my answer to both, I guess. Thank you so much for sharing. Would anyone else like to share? Uh. I think for me, I joined really just looking for like a community and a really a space to be able to to grow alongside a group of men while going through college. Uh, but I think I continue to serve just because I've been able to see how beneficial the experience has been for me and just to be able to see the way uh, the members have been able to like men that I never would have thought I would have gotten to know outside of my fraternity, just on campus, just being able to see the relationships that we've been able to build through our fraternity. Um, I just want to do my part and being able to continue that for future generations of members. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Matt, I'm going to put Dominic on the spot. <laughs> Because I think that when he shares his experience with undergraduate men, it's it's really powerful um, for them to hear from him around his his decision to join and then also Dominic's choice to stay involved um, even prior to him joining the fraternity staff. So Dominic, can you share a little bit as well? Yeah, no, I think that's important. Um, as someone who grew up, didn't grow up with siblings and um, was looking for an experience, especially being an out-of-state student. Um, I think the fraternity filled a lot of those needs. Um, and, you know, and like I said, the fraternity brought me, connected me to my career, as Veronica mentioned, of, you know, of ending up in higher education, and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for DU um, with those experiences. But, you know, I think I, um, I persevered. I think we had some interesting issues pop up when I was an undergrad, and it, that just made me stronger to realize that I wanted to improve the organization, get back to the organization and really pay it forward. So I think it's, um, it's, a, it's been an important, one of the best, I, I will say, I always say it's the best decision I ever made was, was joining DU. Um, you know, I, ha I, I had looked around at a couple other chapters um, as well, but I thought, you know, that this was the one because I truly did believe in what we stood for as an organization. But I stay involved because, exactly because of that. And I had such a profound undergraduate experience and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. And I had worked for the fraternity for a couple of years right out of school and then took a 17 year break and then decided to come back on staff, which I never thought I would. Um, but it was kind of funny how that worked out. Veronica and I were coworkers as well in a, for another organization. And um, it was, it's interesting that never thought that uh, I would come back. Um, it was always something that I'd been a, obviously been an active volunteer, but I, I truly believe in what we're doing as an organization and that, um, and that the organization's principles, you know, how many years, uh, you know, it's been 24 plus years later that it still rings true. So definitely proud to, um, to get involved and stay involved. And um, uh, it's been, it's been, like I said, one of the best decisions I've ever made and probably if not the best decision when it comes to how it really set the pathway forward for, you know, what I've been doing for my, you know, personally and professionally. So. Great, thank you so much. Um, I would encourage you all to, um, as you're having conversations, it may be an activity at a chapter meeting to ask those questions, right? Like hear from your members within your own respective chapters, the answers to those, to those two questions. Why did they join the organization? Why did they choose to stay involved? And you may get some very valuable information and perspective from them reflecting on those questions, right? Because I think that um, a lot of chapters and organizations not Delta Upsilon specific at all, we get through that recruitment period and we forget to go back and reflect around the reason why we joined. Um, when we get caught up in the operational day-to-day -day things um, that we have to do and we have to remember that at the core of why we're involved in the organization, there's a why behind it, there's meaning behind it. And, and a lot of times when individuals have that space and time to reflect on that, 
it becomes an even more valuable experience that they're able to connect to, find value in, and like Dominic said, um, really see how life-changing um, it could be for you individually. So I want to be able to provide you all with some resources to continue this conversation um, amongst your group. Dominic shared earlier the virtual programming page that you all can um, go ahead and find the additional resources, some of the ideas that we posted here within the webinar. If you go to um, chapter resources um, and then you go under VP of member education, you'll see that list that Dominic went over earlier. Um, there's also the Brotherhood events and Brotherhood chair job descriptions that are on the website. Um, we have our Building Better Men retreats. Those are usually in person, but we do have a virtual um, edition now. And so Noah just created um, an opportunity for that to be executed for the first time last weekend. And it was a great opportunity for the men to be involved in that program. Um, Brother Other Week, and then we also have the virtual gavel pass, which Dominic talked about before, and we'll have that up on the website within the next week for you all to see and have as a resource. So now we want to have an opportunity for you all to ask any questions, um, even share anything that you would like to um, give up to the group to, to think about or even share some things that you all are individually doing within your own respective groups on engaging brothers, um, whether it be virtually or in a physical distance manner that have worked for you. Or any other ideas that or events that have been successful? that we might have missed. We kind of, I breeze through a lot of ideas all at once. So any other ideas? I think for the moment, um, we haven't had the chance to start working on the cool, exciting things while we transition into school being in full swing, but I did see a lot of good tangible content from this that I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start pitching to my exec board uh, probably this weekend when we meet and see if we can get rolling with some of these ideas. Great. Yeah, it's, it's good to just think about it. Sometimes this is not the number one priority, but I think as we're thinking about um, at longer term and we're thinking about retention and keeping people engaged that bro these brotherhood events are really gonna make that, you know, make that difference. And I, it's interesting in all my travels the last few years with the fraternity that when we start talking about brotherhood events and for a chapter that traditionally doesn't have a lot of events or doesn't do a ton of things um, together, um, that this is where guys' eyes perk up and people are like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Oh, we never thought about that, but just a matter of actually starting it, which is why we created the brotherhood chair position. Um, we're going to be adding some more resources to, the, to brotherhood opportunities as well, just to get you all just some of those ideas and out there and figure out like how can we best engage people because people are going to have so many diverse interests and in what they actually want to do. Um, so it doesn't have to always be like a large scale paintball event or large scale, um, you know, big camping trip for everyone, but it can be, you know, split up into smaller ideas. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other ideas or questions? thoughts that folks have? Yeah, I was wondering um, what we were thinking um, in terms of alumni events, or if, if there's going to be another webinar on this, then I'm more than happy to shut my pie hole. But um, the, uh, uh, we, we were just talking today about, you know, homecoming and, you know, normally that's such a huge deal for us. Um, but Georgia Tech has been tailgating and, you know, we're probably not going to have, you know, the normal reception for alumni that we do, you know, large venue kind of thing. Um, so has there any, been any discussion with other chapters, um, you know, big football schools, Oklahoma, Kansas, et cetera, um, around that sort of thing? Um, we have not um, had some of those, some of the conversations I have had, um, it really depends on what kind of local venue opportunities or what your local guidelines or guidance is around COVID. So some, some, some of that I've seen outdoor numbers be 25 people. Some places I know in Pennsylvania, it's like 50. Uh, but it's not going to get much bigger than that. Um, and really trying to get creative with outdoor events or what are opportunities that if there's a virtual component and people who can come together who feel comfortable 
but making sure that, you know, that you're following guidelines. Um, I, I think what I have learned right now for in both either undergrad event or um, an alumni event that people on a college campus are very much open to kind of the call out culture um, to be able to say, hey, oh, they're not following guidelines, you know, and be able to kind of take a picture and send it to the school newspaper, right, or whatever that might look like. So whatever that is, and you can connect um, with me um, about that. We do have alumni event kind of guidelines for the um, on our website under the subs free housing page, but realistically, those are kind of out the window because we need to make sure that, you know, people are following whatever, you know, would it be Atlanta mm -hmm. guidelines around outdoor events. Um, but I think, yeah. I think there could be some ways chapters have talked about doing some virtual components and some in-person components or splitting that up and having like multi-parts. So it's, you know, things are done potentially, you know, if it's usually 150 people splitting it up into like four smaller events, kind of back to back to back to back, whatever, okay. like, or doing it by, class. you know, doing it by the guys from the fifties and sixties get together, guys from the seventies and eighties together, guys from nineties and beyond. So whatever that might get, trying to get creative on, a half it might have to be smaller scale things, but it might be more arranging it by groups of people that went to school together and what, what I've heard. So, okay. Um, so thank you. Because a lot of it you're going to want to hear from that. So yeah. So. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Any other specific questions you all have? Um, feel free to contact Veronica and I, um, or we can um, connect. If we don't have the answers, we can connect with our colleagues um, and try to figure out best practices for all of you. But yes, we want you all to be successful um, and feel free to definitely reach out if anything came up today or if you want any more details about any of the ideas that we shared today um, about how does that work or how do we pull that off. Um, we definitely, I can definitely walk you through any of the, those activities a little bit more in depth. Yep. Cool. Here's our contact information. Um, both, just both of our last names at LTU.org. So feel free to reach out if you all need us. Thank you all so much for joining us. If there are no questions um, or further questions, we'll go ahead and end this session. Please know that this recording, in addition to all the recordings that we've done virtually from the summer up until today, will be posted on the website. So you can go on the homepage and there's a, a banner that says virtual programming. You click on it, you scroll down to um, previous recordings and they're all listed there. So you all have a wonderful evening. And again, if you need anything from either of us or your individual chapter liaisons are also a resource, feel free to reach out. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thanks, guys. Cheers.